welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel, that is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And today I'm here to talk about The Pono Way by Kirsten M. Corby, which is one of our self-published science fiction contest books. I'm not going to do a pro-con version of this because there's a lot to talk about, or at least in, right now in my head, there's a lot to talk about. And so I'm, instead of actually saying listing pros and cons, I'm just going to give you my book review. This is a near future science fiction. It's set in like 2090, 2091, somewhere around there, on an artificial island. And the main character that we're following is a journalist. At this time, the United States has collapsed and divided into separate country states. And I don't think it was, it's just the United States, because one of the countries goes up into Canada, or takes Vancouver, which traditionally is in Canada. So I think that it might just be like North America as a whole has collapsed. And the main character was living in Chicago during this collapse. Has a lot of trauma for, for the events that went down. Now Jake lives on this artificial island and is reporting on worldwide news to the Panoans and reporting on Panoan news to the world since the seasteading um, Pono is not the only artificial island now in international waters, but the mainlands, the other countries don't really know a whole lot about don't really know a whole lot about how these island nations operate. During the time that this book starts, there's a volcanic eruption in Mount Rainier, and it takes out Seattle. And this, at this time, the West Coast is called the Cascade States. And so just after this explosion, an extremist religious group called the Abrahamists then attacks Vancouver and Los Angeles, and then Pono, the island nation starts getting refugees from Los Angeles. And the central story is how is Pono going to deal with the refugees? Being an island nation, they don't have a lot of resources or space. So if you are interested in a conversation of what that looks like, an island nation taking on refugees, and how does that work, this is a great example of what it could be. Really, as I was reading this, I really felt like it was more like a futurist story. Uh, I felt like this had been written by a futurist, someone who looks into the future and takes events and situations and then uses a story to show how things play out. That's kind of what this felt like more than just a science fiction story. We are still in a science fiction future where there's different technologies that are interesting besides the artificial islands, there's other, there's other uh, technologies that is mentioned. And then the, how the society of Pono is set up is different than the United States or other countries that we know today. And purposely so, it talks about how the founders took what, they took the good things that they found from other places and then said, this is how we're going to operate. The subtitle of this book is a solar punk novel. And solar punk is supposed to be hopeful. That, that's kind of their niche, is it? They're hopeful science fiction using a lot of more natural technology. And Pono is set up that way. But you don't get the hopeful feeling of the conflict uh, until the very end of the book. So having completed the book, okay, I see. But to be honest, if I had been reading the first 10 to 20% of this book, I would not have voted for it to go forward in this contest because I was bored. This book does a lot of telling. Yeah, we have a main character that we're following, but we are never really in his head. It's We're, we're being told he did this, he did that, and then he thought this. And sometimes his actions and his thoughts were different, but we didn't have the connection of why or how that was going on. It was all of a sudden just very abrupt. Even though he's been doing this, this is what he really thinks. And while I understand what Corby was trying to do is kind of show the 
variety of thoughts of how people who work with refugees like, will think and versus what they do. And then just bring on the variety of perspectives about the refugees. And even from the refugees, the variety of perspectives they have about being refugees. And when you talk to them about what their wants are, you get a variety of people wanting different things and reacting differently to being a refugee. And having Jake be a journalist allowed him then to talk with everyone. So you get to see those multiple uh, conversations and then you get to see Jake talking with international news networks. What I think Corby does really well is you get a lot of contradiction with the things that Jake is doing and thinking. And apparently he has a lot of trauma about the river riots that went on in Chicago when the United States broke apart. And living with someone who has PTSD, I can see that this person has PTSD and it just hasn't been addressed appropriately. Or they thought it had been, but hey, here's a trigger situation, so now it's coming up again. He, I guess, hadn't been trained to realize, hey, this might happen. So you got a lot of mental health issues going on. I thought the setup of the government taking, allowing the refugees to arrive, taking care of them, but then staying in a standstill pattern was interesting. And I do feel like the main character had a right to call him out, be like, hey, you guys aren't actually solving anything and we can't continue to go on this way with everyone on a holding pattern. Tensions are going to rise. People are, it's just going to get worse. But that is what happens is having a holding pattern. And this is where I think you get more into the thought experiment portion because what do we do nowadays with refugees? Even governments who accept them in, a lot of times they are stuck in a holding pattern while they get processed into a new country. And then as I, I shared, the beginning of everything started with an eruption. It seemed like all the refugees were from LA though. So we didn't have any of the refugees coming from the Seattle area who had escaped and you know they're like well we tried to go to Vancouver LA but but they were invaded so we can't go there so we came to you guys I think that would have then added another layer to the refugee conversation of like oh the deserving or yeah the deserving refugees and the non-deserving refugees because that is a conversation that happens a lot nowadays is oh you're a refugee because of a natural disaster or something that you just could not control. So yes, we will take you in. Oh, no, you're running away from a corrupt government, a government that is, you know, hunting you down. No, you're not a deserving one. So that is a conversation that people have today, which I'm surprised wasn't included in this book. Instead, it seemed like all the refugees were from the LA area and not from the volcanic explosion from before. And as everything goes and went along and Jake was reporting and meeting so many people who are like, hey, I just need a purpose and that's getting shared with the government. I could see the solution for this island's problem or how this island could solve the problem long before the conclusion. And again, I went back to them poking at the government who is in the holding pattern versus moving forward. So final thoughts, the writing execution of this book, I don't like. It, the style of the writing, I think makes this a boring book. However, the conversation around it, I think is very important. And I think that anybody who works as a ref refugees should read this book. Not that it's gonna solve every single situation, but it shows, hey, you don't have to just keep people in a holding pattern. There's other ways to absorb refugee groups or to help refugee groups. I fully believe that the author did their research, both about refugee situations and also the science fiction. And even putting it in a near science fiction then makes you really contemplate things that are going on today. Like we have the refugees from Ukraine but we also have refugees coming from Central America, like for example, Nicaragua, where there's a dictatorship that is bound and determined to take out anybody who speaks against them. Goes back to my 
comment about who is the deserving immigrant or who is the deserving refugee versus the non-deserving refugee. We got issues in this country. I'm from the United States. Well, we got issues in this country when it comes to refugees. And I think this is, is an important thought experiment that should be shared with more people. But the story needs to be reworked a little bit, in my opinion. Just because I'm sounding critical of it doesn't mean that other people aren't going to enjoy it or don't already enjoy it. Those are just some of my thoughts about this book, The Pono Way by Kirsten M. Corby. If you have read this book, I would love to know what you thought. Thank you and have a great day.